Now I realize today is the day that Big Navi is launched, and at this point, nobody cares about Ampere anymore because they've been hurt so deep by it. But, two months ago to the day pretty much, I paid for this damn thing, I got it two days ago, and I'm gonna do a video on it if it kills me. So what I decided to do was test this graphics card in a situation that applies to over 76% of gamers. Now that sounds like a very relevant test to do, until you realize that those 76% of gamers probably aren't shopping for a 3080, but you know, whatever, just let me do my video. <laughs> One of the main reasons why I decided to test the RTX 3080 at 1080p, and yes, if you're new to the channel, you're gonna have to get used to how I say that, but one of the main reasons why I tested it at that resolution is because BenQ sent over this EX2710, which is the best 27 inch 1080p high refresh rate IPS HDR free sync display that I've ever used, and it feels a lot more premium than monitors in this price category usually do. One of the reasons for that is the excellent image quality. It's got like black equalizer and an HDR implementation. It does actually look better than most HDR implementations. And then there's the build quality of the monitor. Its stand is amazing, which is usually one of the big shortcomings of these kinds of displays. It's very sturdy and it's actually got adjustments that make sense, right? So I thought, how well does this monitor pair with a really high-end GPU? And in the same time, we can answer, should you care about the 3080 if you game at 1080p? Which seems like a fairly obvious thing of like, obviously it's massively overpowered for 1080p, but it's interesting because there's a bit more to it than that. Now the exact version of the RTX 3080 that I'm testing today is one of the runtier versions. It's the EVGA XC3 Ultra. Now its runtiness is one of the main reasons I got this version of the card because I wanted to be able to fit it in ITX chassis because I really like having my PCs double as a fire starter. Now physically, I quite like the way that this version of the card looks except for the weird red fish lips on the front of it. I don't understand why they put that there. I know that EVGA offered to send out like colored replacements for it, but why red lips? It doesn't match the aesthetic of any of the rest of the card. It's such a weird addition that it almost seems like they were taking the piss when they did it. I, I don't know. It's it's, it's a bit strange. But with all of the physical stuff out of the way, let's talk about the benchmarks, the really exciting part. Let's see how overkill the 3080 is at 1080p. Now I tested it with an i9-10850K overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz with 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz. Many 32s there, it's really good for my self-esteem. Um, but yeah, so this configuration should give you a good indication of what the maximum performance is that you can get at the moment out of this GPU at 1080p. So let's have a quick look at some basic benchmarks. These results in a vacuum are impressive. Battlefield 5 with ultra settings is hitting 176 frames per second average. That means to take full advantage of this performance, you need a 240 hertz monitor. For Battlefield 5, that's pretty ridiculous. Escape from Tarkov at the highest settings at 1080p pretty much sits pegged at the 120 frame per second cap of the game engine. It does dip below that sometimes, but that's just server optimization issues. It is a really smooth, good looking gaming experience. Metro Exodus almost hits 120 frames per second at ultra settings, which is kind of unprecedented. And the same thing goes for Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ultra settings 174 frames per second average. It's so crazy. But these results get more impressive when you factor into account the ray tracing performance. So let's, let's have a look at that.
Battlefield 5 with maxed ray tracing settings at 1080p is hitting almost 120 frames per second, which means you can comfortably game online and the frame rate isn't gonna hold you back. It looks really good. Metro Exodus almost averages 100 frames per second with ultra ray tracing. It's pretty crazy. With Metro Exodus, you can take things even further with the extreme settings and ultra ray tracing. And here, you're still getting 54 frames per second with the RTX 3080, which is crazy. That may not sound very high, but that setting level essentially just exists as like bamboo fingernail torture for graphics cards. And the RTX 3080 just proves its dominance here. But I think what's the most impressive is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where you're getting 136 frames per second average with ultra ray tracing. With ultra ray tracing, you barely drop under 100 frames per second while gaming. But what we're going to do now is we're going to let some air into this vacuum by comparing the 2070 Super, which is a loser previous generation GPU. But the reason that I'm using this comparison is to see if the extra performance that you get from the 3080 actually matters on a 144Hz 1080p monitor. With no ray tracing, there is a performance benefit from the 3080, and I'd hope there's a performance benefit from it. But with all of the games, except for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Metro Exodus, you're still getting above 100 frames per second average, which is kind of the sweet spot for gaming for me. And this is with cranked settings on all of these games. So subjectively, when comparing non-ray traced to non-ray traced performance, the 2070 Super does a really good job at 1080p, and you don't really need much more gaming performance than this. But the story gets very interesting when you compare the 3080's ray traced results to the 2070 Super's non-ray traced results. This is where the extra power of the 3080 really starts to show at 1080p is when you introduce ray traced settings. Because with the 2070 Super, the, the performance without ray tracing and ultra settings in these visual safari games is kind of where you want it to be. So there isn't much room for compromise. Whereas with the 3080, there's so much extra performance left in the tank that when you take into account the ray traced performance penalty, you're still sitting in that frame per second sweet spot, which is, which is pretty crazy. And that shows you where the 3080's extra performance matters at 1080p. It's ray tracing. If you want to use non-DLS ray tracing, or you want to use 1080p as the base resolution for DLSS's upscaling on your higher resolution monitor, then the 3080's performance at this resolution does make sense. Whether or not you care about ray tracing is personally up to you, but considering the fact that AMD now supports it and the new consoles support ray tracing, this is something that going into the future is going to be more relevant. And that's why the extra power of this current generation or new generation of graphics cards starts to actually make any sense. But if you don't care about that and you just want to play FPS games, multiplayer online, at 1080p, you really don't need to worry about getting something like an RTX 3080. And honestly, even if that is something that you care about, an RTX 3070, which costs less money, is gonna give you a similar experience. And I'm sure it's gonna be the same thing with the RX 6800 and the 6800 XT, which are gonna cost less and provide a very similar kind of gaming benchmark. But that's more a comment on whether or not the, the 3080 matters full stop, as opposed to whether it matters at 1080p. So in short, the 1080p use case of these high-end next-gen GPUs like the RTX 3080, and potentially the up-and-coming big navi GPUs with the RX 6800 and 6800 XT, 
is high refresh rate ray traced visual safari gaming. And if that's something that you're into, then this BenQ EX2710 is a really good pairing because of just the beautiful image quality that it offers. These games look majestic on it with its high refresh rate color accuracy-ness. So with that, it brings me to the end of a reasonably convoluted video. Uh, if you liked it, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm currently in a queue for either the RX 6800 or the 6800 XT, depending on which one I can get my hands on. So there will be a video on those at some point in the future. And yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.